Welcome back to another episode of NFL News on the Boomer Bus channel. I'm your host Terry, and today we are talking about this offseason going buck wild. I said once I it was already, you know, potential to be a little wild, and it was a little wild. But once Tom Brady came back, I was like, okay, all right. This this is about to get full nutty. And it absolutely has. So First of all, I want to say the NFL is a copycat league, and we know this. Many people have said this, blah, blah, blah. So you just got to understand what the new trend is. And the new trend right now, unmistakably, is F them picks. F them picks. We Three first-round picks. Who cares? Who cares about these first-round picks? Get them out. Now, obviously, those are reserved for big-time quarterback deals. But I don't know, man. I'm not so sure. In the way that players are kind of pushing their way out of the door, who's to say? Who's to say that a big-time, prime-time player like T.J. Watt, if T.J. Watt pushed his way out the door right now today, who's to say he wouldn't command two first-round picks or more? So, it's but we know what's going on with quarterbacks but that is the wave that is the wave and i don't necessarily put it into let's go i don't know like the, you could look at stafford and even brady even though they didn't trade for brady but you could look at that and people could say well yeah the trend is go get a veteran quarterback we're one quarterback away that's always been a thing people have always gone for broke to get picks or if they could get a quarterback which you couldn't as much before, they would go broke for that too. Shoot, they went, the Falcons went broke to move up to get Julio. And so I don't think that's necessarily a new wave, but the new wave is F them picks. Uh, I, again, I think you have very special situations, and the, these are special. I mean, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, everything about that situation is special. But still, I think this this mantra of how people are dealing picks is different. And I've been saying that actually for years once they changed the rookie scale. And so the the frequency of draft pick trading has been completely different because it's cheaper to you get rookies uh, as far as, okay, we don't have to pay them in the same amount of money in the first round anymore. And so we already saw uh, picks kind of get traded more. But now we're really seeing this advent of win now. And that is the wave. And that has led us to a crazy offseason where Russell Wilson is now on the Broncos. Devontae Adams on the Raiders. Uh, Khalil Mack from our Bears, or my Bears, traded to the Chargers. And um, now Deshaun Watson going to the Browns. So people are getting busy. So um, the the Russell Wilson one, I don't know, for some reason, maybe because they did this last year, it was just like, okay, and the Broncos seemed really desperate. So, okay, it happened. That's just, I mean, Seattle, if Seattle was winning, it'd probably be different, but it's just like, okay, it's time to move on. So I don't think that was just like a bombshell. I mean, it's a big trade, but it was just like, okay, cool. But... The whole uh, thing, again, with Tom Brady coming back shakes things up. And I took him at his word. I took him at face value. Um, I wouldn't, I mean, there's nothing that Brady could lose at this point in terms of legacy. But if I could take away, like, two cool points, I probably would because I I don't like how this was handled. Like, the fact that he came back makes it seem like something pushed him into retirement and I just wish that was all handled better for a guy of Tom Brady's stature. But him coming back completely shakes up the NFC where you were like in a position where you might have not had Russell, Tom, or Aaron Rodgers anymore. And that would have been insane. But uh, obviously Aaron signed and then Tom comes back. So that's cool. And then they get Shaq Mason. And so they make a move. They make a move to stay afloat. I think Russell Gage is going to really shine with them, too. And so they also uh, signed Godwin after they tagged him. So um, they're ready to go. They're ready to try to run it back. So, And I do think they have a good chance with Tom. So that was huge. 
Um, of course, Aaron Rodgers staying with the Packers was huge, but then this whole Devontae Adams thing. So let's dig into that a little bit. Um, Devontae Adams essentially did what Deshaun Watson was doing, except he did it way more privately. And I'm not talking about Deshaun Watson right now. I'm talking about when before the whole legal stuff. And so apparently, which we didn't know because it was quiet, Devontae Adams told the Packers before the offseason that I'm not coming back here. I don't care. Nothing you do, I'm coming back. And so they say Aaron Rodgers knew that. Aaron Rodgers, uh, that's why they said he was aware that when they tagged him and that he might get traded because Devontae told him not coming back. And so it wasn't like I'm never playing with Aaron Rodgers again. He said I'm not signing with the Packers. And so, of course, we get this whole narrative spin that Aaron Rodgers somehow ruined um somehow ruined Devon Tabs. And I have to look. I don't, I don't remember what the cap is, but everybody keeps saying Aaron Rodgers is forty percent of the cap. And his hit is twenty eight million. Um so if he's forty percent of the cap, what are some of these other quarterbacks? His base salary is only one million. I, and then you got the bonus. So like I said, I went over the contract in more depth in the last episode, so you can check that out. But the point is they aren't reporting it correctly. Like well, they tend not to do. He's not on a fifty million dollar salary. He's on a one million dollar salary. And so is Deshaun Watson. And so what they've done now is converted most of this into signing bonus, roster bonuses, option bonuses. And they don't hit the cap the same way. And so that money is coming to them up front in a different way, not on their base salary. And so we've all, it, it didn't take long. Everybody ran with that real fast. You knew it was going to happen. Uh, and Rogers is selfish. Up uh, uh, he, he said he didn't care about Adams. He wanted his money. But we have reports and people are still ignoring them, but they're right there. The Packers not only offered the same, but they offered more than the Raiders. So they clearly had the deal to work it out. This was not about money. This was about him and his relationship with the Packers. So this was about the the Vontae Adams and the Packers and their relationship, period. And whatever that entails, we might not know. But when you stack it all up, it's okay. Even if you were cool with Rodgers, even if you see him as one of the best quarterbacks, Derek Carr is cooler with him than Aaron Rodgers. And Derek Carr ain't as good as him as a quarterback, but he believes he could be successful with him. You're not in Green Bay. You're still getting paid. Okay, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Now, you are in the Slaughterhouse AFC West, but it is what it is. And so that was probably more attractive to him. And so it wasn't about money, and people want to keep spinning this narrative that they can't sign anybody because of Aaron Rodgers, and it's just not true on any level. And I think what's interesting is now I'm hearing that he had this uh, non-exclusive tag distinction, which I didn't realize. And I also didn't really know what that all entailed, but apparently the Packers had the right of first refusal. They uh, had the chance to match. And I don't know if this is 100% true, just what I heard on one of the sports radio, or not radio, but your medias, is that since the Packers matched it, he had to come back. It wasn't really a choice. I believe it because this is the worst uh, PA and uh, Players Association in all major sports. And the fact they have all these tags is probably true. So that means the Packers had to have let Devontae Adams go. And I don't know, maybe they're doing business different. Maybe Aaron Rodgers was a part of that. Even though they're paying him out to be the villain somehow, Maybe he was a part of saying, hey, just, just do right by him. Because he went to the team he wanted to go to, 
<laughs> and they they overmatched the offer, so it sounds like he was supposed to stay, even against his will. And maybe they just said it's not worth that. Now, is it worth the first and the second? I would have think more, but he wasn't under contract, so there's that's it's that part too. I get that. Um, so yeah, that that whole thing is interesting, and I don't know if we'll find out more. But it leaves the Packers in a curious spot. Um, I'm not too sad to see Devontae leave our division. Um, it leaves the Packers in a curious spot. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are freaking out like we literally don't have the biggest, well, not the biggest, but one of the biggest acquisition uh, events coming up, the draft. And so people freaking out, oh, this, this, what are they going to do? Like, you still need to see what they do in the draft, then let's panic. So we'll see what will happen with the Packers and – Man, yeah, I'm excited to see Derek Carr back with Devontae Adams and what he can do. And and really, it's it's uh it's a t- it's a test for both because Devontae Adams we never seen without Aaron Rodgers, and everyone is going nuts. Like he came in as the best receiver. Like he was not. He was a second round prospect. He wasn't that great. Him and Carr weren't that great in Fresno State. Carr. Almost, I actually, he might have been a second round pick. And so they came, you know, Devontae's come a long way, and you can't sit here and act like that's not part of Aaron Rodgers doing. And so I'm, you know, we're all curious to see what he does with a different quarterback. And then Derek Carr, we're going to be curious do you hold Adams back or do you utilize his talent to elevate your play? So that's going to be very interesting. Then we got the big one, Deshaun Watson. And and really the Browns, the whole story about the Browns and Baker Mayfield and all that. Let me say this about the Baker situation. I find myself taking his side slightly, slightly. I, I do believe that there is room for you need to compete and you need to be accountable to the fact that you have not been great consistently. And so, yeah, you could talk about injuries, whatever. Don't play. And this idea that the Browns forced them, I'm not trying to hear that. Don't play if you can't play. And so the fact you went out there and, you know, you looked the way you did, you got to you gotta hold that. You got to hold that L and what comes with it comes with it. Now, where I have an issue is the way they handled these things. Now, look. You could sit down with Baker a month in advance and have this discussion about Deshaun Watson. That don't mean it's going to go well. But that isn't really the issue to me more so than this this leak, which it seems like they really didn't care if it was out there, that they wanted an adult at the quarterback position and blah, blah, blah. And, again, people could deny all they want. When people want stuff to come out, whether it's the agent, the player, the the organization, they'll get it out. So this stuff coming out of the Browns uh, or about how they feel about Baker, uh, why do I need to stay here? Why do I need to stay here? And so I don't know. I, I don't think it's the exact same as a Jimmy G, them trading all his picks to get Trey Lance or Aaron Rodgers excuse me, with them getting Jordan Love, I don't think that's quite the same. And honestly, it might be a little easier to understand, like, yo, this is an elite quarterback. They don't always come uh, available, so they're going to talk to him. But, again, how you kind of trash Baker, I I don't know. I don't know. And, And, again, that's what got out to the media. Who knows what Baker's team actually heard, you know, from their sources. So, I kind of side with them. They they didn't handle it well, and he don't want to be there. And so, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is there. And at first, it was going to be a very interesting standoff because they he not only said goodbye, then he said I request to be traded, and then the Browns was like, no, right, like right after, no, we're not doing that. And so that was going to be a stalemate. And we go back to um, Devontae Adams. They had him, but he really didn't want to be there. So how do you reconcile that? 
And, you know, was he willing to sit out and just lose his paycheck? Who knows? He, I mean, he got more time to do progressive commercials. But now it don't matter because Deshaun Watson is going to the Browns. So it seems, if the reports are correct, that Deshaun, uh, that I think the team confirmed that Deshaun, yes, personally called them and said they're not part of it, them and the Panthers. But... Uh, the Browns just kept pressing. They, I don't know who was, if they text them, if they talked to his agent, what, but they pressed them and they kept pressing them. And I don't know, I guess he changed his mind. Now, my guess is this is the only team real willing to fully guarantee his contract. Now, I haven't seen the specifics of it, but looking at what he makes this year is very similar, as I said before. It ain't $230 million on a check. The man is going to have big bonuses, whether it's a roster bonus, a signing bonus each year, option bonus down the road. It's just like Aaron Rodgers. His base salary is only a million dollars. And so he's going to get a fat, you know, sum, but it ain't going to be like all right now. And guaranteed don't mean like no matter what he does, he he gets his money. I saw some people, first of all, some people online saying real stupid stuff about Deshaun Watson. And I'm not even a big Deshaun Watson fan, but people saying some ridiculous things. And one of those things is, oh, well, he's just going to sit out and decide not to play and get paid. That's not how contracts work. Uh, and so, but yeah, he's going to Cleveland. And uh, I think it was Ian Rappaport. One of them said like, According to their sources, what it came down to is like, yeah, they give him more money, but also they got a way better team. And I, I'm glad to be honest with you, because Georgia, there's a whole, you know, feeling behind that. The Saints had a better team, but who knows what they were able to offer, uh, especially contract wise. And then the Browns, Cleveland, the Baker situation. They got Amari Cooper, but, you know, they just kind of lost some other pieces. I get it. I, I get it. It was, you know, Cleveland ain't the most attractive thing. But um, I think making a choice based on the roster is a good sign of where his head is at. And so I like that. And we'll kind of see what happens. So that's huge. And then Baker requests to go to the Colts. Specifically, we'll see if they can do that. But they now it's so funny how they were like, We're not trading Baker next day. Yeah, we're trading Baker, <laughs> and of course, they're going to because they got Deshaun Watson. So, there's that. Uh, it seems like he's gonna go to the Colts. Um, I don't know. I wonder if Houston was like, Hey, don't do that. <laughs> I wonder, if like, do us a solid and do not <laughs> send Baker to the Colts. I don't know. We'll see, but I think that'd be a good match for him, a good place to restart. Um, and hopefully not take as many hits. So yeah, it's been crazy. It's been, it's been buck wow. I mean, small, but is it Darius Smith backed out of his contract? Who knows exactly why? I mean, somebody probably knows, but it's been a number of those. I feel like we don't get though as many as we got this year where people agree to terms and then go to the sign and something happens. So we've got that a number of times. So is the Darius still out there? And then our Bears, uh, Ogan Joby failed his physical, and I'm not mad at it. And so he's not signing with us. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. And I, and we still got some dominoes to fall. We, we got to see what happens with, um, uh, Jimmy G, if something happens and what that says about Trey Lance. And then we got to see what happens with Baker Mayfield as well. And what Ter Teron Armstead is going to do, cause it's, it's, it was some reports that he might have been waiting to see if they got Deshaun Watson back in New Orleans or in New Orleans and he might have went back. But now that that's not happening, you know, does he sign with Cleveland? They move Wills over to the right. Well, they got Conklin still. Uh, I mean, Wills really could kick him inside to guard and be fine. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening. It's been a wild one. Um, this is, I don't know. This has been one of the wildest years, but I do think part of that is because we are getting close to that cap increase. And so some of the moves are being done with, you know, the future in sight. So 
Anyway, go to the comment section. Let me know what you think about everything. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And thank you for listening.